Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hi everyone. Today our topic is bronchial asthma, a very important and common topic that you are uh, going to encounter during internal medicine, rotation, inpatient, outpatient, everywhere. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, labs or investigations or management. Maybe we can tackle that in another video in the hospital series, but we are going to talk about the uh, history part of it and the physical examination part of it and just to give it a little bit more uh, light from these two important perspectives because this is really what makes the diagnosis um, and this is the most most important aspect of this common uh, me uh, medical entity so let's let's get into it so what is the basic definition of asthma so basically it's a chronic Inflammatory disorders of the airways characterized by marked variability in air airflow obstruction that is often re reversible, not always, but often reversible, either spontaneously or with treatment that will lead to the cardinal symptoms of asthma, which are usually recurrent. And these include wheezing, chest tightness, cough, and dyspnea. Occasionally, we'll talk about that. So basically, there's a lot, a lot to talk about in this uh, Definition. So basically, it's first, it's a chronic disease, meaning, um, yes, it might uh, get worse get, or get better by time, but um, the underlying uh, pathophysiology is probably still there, but the manifestation of asthma might, might differ uh, uh, during the spectrum of the age of the patient. So sometimes uh, the asthma attacks might be like really severe in childhood, and then uh, the patient grows out up or they might go out of it actually so um, this is important but again it's it's mostly a chronic problem and then uh, it's inflammatory disease and that also suggests why um, steroids which has which are anti-inflammatory are really kind of a corner store for the management uh, especially in the acute setting so it's mostly an inflammatory disorder disease and it's a disease of airways pulmonary airways not really parenchyma and that might explain why, you know, in most cases, uh, chest x-ray, for example, or, or imaging might be normal. Uh, of course, if, you know, uh, if it's really chronic, there might be some other uh, structural changes, that the chest wall and all that, but uh, it's basically an, an airway dis disease, not a parenchymal disease. And it's characterized by marked variability in airway obstruction, and that variability is important. Some attacks are mild, other attacks are severe, some attacks are life-threatening. So important to recognize that and um, this is important to ask the patient about uh, in the history and you want to uh, ask the patient about how uh, the, what they consider their asthma is. Do they consider it to be bad or do they consider it to be mild? Um, and then reversibility is also important. Most of the time uh, what distinguishes, for example, asthma from chronic obstructive, uh, obstructive pulmonary disease or airway disease is reversibility. Um, and this also has some diagnostic implications with the test that we usually use to diagnose asthma in some cases, like the methacholine test. But again, uh, uh, this is also variable and some reversibility uh, might be complete, other reversibility might not be complete, uh, complete and there's a lot, a lot of overlap between uh, bronchial asthma and COPD actually. And uh, sometimes this, uh, um, especially like mild episode, might just resolve, resolve spontaneously, but sometimes you really need to treat the symptoms. And, you know, unfortunately we know that some patient uh, might still die from it. So that's why it's a really serious disease. Now, uh, these are the kind of cardinal symptoms um, of asthma, the wheezing, the chest tightness, the cough and dyspnea, and uh, most of these symptoms are recurrent. So it's, um, uh, it's important to try to tease out this part of, of, the, uh, of the history when you're talking to the patient whom you're suspecting to have asthma. Because most of the time, the patient might have some, they sh should, most of the time they should really have some prior uh, similar episode. They might be milder, they might be severe, especially if they have not been diagnosed with asthma before. So keep that in mind. Now, wheezing is very common, and this is probably the most common symptoms. The patient might actually use this word wheezing if they're like in you know, a native speaking uh, patient. And um, we'll, we'll talk about the differential diagnosis of wheezing when you talk about physical examination. And you have to know that not all that wheezing is asthma. This is a really important and famous phrase, but it's really genuinely right. So, um, but yeah, wheezing might be um, um, one of the manifestations, just tightness. 
Uh, the patient might describe it as chest tightness, might describe it as dyspnea, uh, not the don't describe it as dyspnea all the time, so that's really important. So shortness of breath, yes, some, uh, many patients with asthma might present with some uh, description of shortness of breath, but that might not be the case in every, ca uh, every patient. They might actually uh, suffer more from chest tightness. Dyspnea itself is very vague symptom, actually. It's very challenging sometimes to tease that out from some patient. These patients uses really different words to describe it. So try to have a low threshold to, to um, consider the symptoms that are the patient presenting with as dyspnea and uh, consider bronchial asthma in this situation. Also, chest tightness might look similar to chest pain on differential diagnosis of chest pain, especially for a middle aged or elderly, you know, ischemia. Sometimes my bishop might not, might actually deny the word pain. And I might say, no, it's actually, it's not pain, it's really like tightness. And uh, remember that bronchial constriction might give that feeling of tightness rather than, you know, chest pain, but some patient might describe it as chest pain as well. So that that's one challenge about asthma. It's um, the symptoms are not very specific and, um, you know, as you will see, even wheezing is not very specific. Yes, it's very suggestive and um, you really want to tease out uh, the history really well in this patient to try to to uh, figure that out. And that's why I think it's really history is really important in this patient. Now, the, um, the basic pathophysiology, you know, it's, it's really broad. Again, we're not going to talk about that in details here. This is out of this COVID video, but it's basically a heightened airway hyper responsiveness to specific or not specific stimuli. So um, having a particular stimuli is really important. This is something that you need to tease out in history as well. And this is kind of the pathognomonic feature of asthma, this kind of presence uh, of stimuli, which might not be clear in history, but you really have to make some effort to try to figure that out. And exposure to these agents or these stimuli in healthy individuals usually does not induce such symptoms. And that's, that's why it's really kind of the pathognomonic feature of asthma, the presence of these stimuli and the airway hyper-responsiveness um, according to the uh, when they get exposed to these stimuli. So asthma is not really a single disease um, entity uh, with a unique pathogenesis, but rather uh, recognized to be a clinical syndrome and a heterogeneous disease spectrum. That's really important. So uh, it's, it's very variable. And as you saw here, cough could be like the predominant symptoms sometimes, as in cough variant asthma, and we're going to talk about that. So it might, if you don't have uh, that in mind, you might miss a diagnosis. And again, some some patients might have just like a mild episode all the time. Some patients might have like a little severe uh, episode most of the time. So it's really very variable. Some patients might have clear stimuli or triggers. Other might not have uh, trigger, triggers. Some patients might develop it early in their uh, life. Some patients might develop it late, like in you know, adult on onset asthma. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's it's very variable, so you have to, to recognize that. And there's a lot of interplay between genetic and environmental factors. And again, we're not going to get into the details of that because, again, it's out of the scope of this video. So a little bit more about the epidemiology of uh, asthma, just like really basic stuff. We're not going to get into a lot of details. So um, the gender doesn't help you a lot with making diagnosis of asthma, the age also can happen in the uh, males and females, it can happen in the young and the old. And also the ethnicity of the patient doesn't help you that much. It, it's also kind of okay in black and um, as well in, in white. So uh, keep that in mind. The severity of asthma may vary, but not very significantly within a given patient. So sometimes the patient might have like mild episodes, sometimes severe episode. Uh, but uh, generally, with those with mild asthma, they really progress to a more severe asthma. So if, if um, a young patient had like mild asthma throughout their young um, um, age, it's unlikely that they're going to get like a really severe asthma as they're getting old, uh, unless there is other uh, pulmonary or cardiac disease. Um, and those with severe asthma uh, from the start, they usually have severe uh, disease at the onset um, when they have like severe disease uh, later on. So this is kind of a kind of a general pattern, but again, it, it definitely varies from, from patient to patient. And some risk factors that might be associated with high mortality that you need to ask the patient about when you're taking the history and evaluating the patient is a uh, patient with history of poorly controlled disease with frequent use of bronchodilator inhalers might have higher mortality, pay attention to these patients. 
patients who, despite having moderate to severe disease, but they're not really taking corticosteroid therapy for any reason. Uh, they're not taking the medication, they're not compliant, they have insurance, they cannot pay for it. And for any reason, they usually might have high mortality. And also patient with uh, previous admissions to the hospital with near fatal asthma. This is an important point to ask a patient about when evaluating them is whether they have a prior history of being intubated or having prior history of being in the ICU uh, because of their asthma, because that might uh, indicate that the patient might have having severe disease and you might need to be pay more attention to them when you are evaluating them.